Hey guys, this is Helldozer from Zombieland Gaming, and today I am on my Warlock. Now, <clears throat> I wanted to go over something um, that there are, some people are talking about and some people aren't. Um, I wanted to put my two cents in on the whole leveling with heirlooms and what you should be doing. Now, this is just one Warlock's experience, and this is, as you can see, I am out in Warlords of Draenor. Um, so this is not going to be like a comprehensive guide. It's not going to be like a... Um, I'm going over the whole entire thing. Um, you know, it's not going to be a whole full-blown leveling guide. What it is going to be, like I said, is just my experience, what I've been doing, and what's kind of worked out best for me. You're going to have varying results. What does that mean? It means you're not going to have the, get the same results I probably have had, and nor should you. Um, as I said, it's just some of the experiences that I've had while I've been leveling. I'm going to actually drop him so I can make a quick escape. Throw a little fear on him. Throw my other friendly helper out. There we go. We've got a whole bunch of whole bunch of fun stuff going on now. Um, It's just stuff that I've gone through that I've noticed. Now, I leveling really is not that hard in World of Warcraft, and there's this big question of, well, they played fun and games with the numbers, they did this and that, and you're right, they did. I also think that leveling was getting to the point where it was obscenely easy to just roll out through the levels, and it kind of made a gave the wrong impression to new players. Experienced players, whatever. They know the drill, they know the deal, they know how the whole thing worked. New players probably thought, well, shit, this is World of Warcraft, this is what everybody is doing, oh my god, why haven't I been doing this sooner, this is so easy. Well, you know, again, back in vanilla, things were a lot different. It was a longer grind, and I, I don't think that's what they were really going for, but they did want to slow things down, and I don't have a problem with that. Now, what my main point today is, is people are online asking, is having heirlooms worth it, and is it worth upgrading them? Now, that's kind of a multi-pronged answer, and I'm going to do my best to sort out an answer that is not a ramble fest and is straight and direct to the point, because a lot of the stuff that I found online is people arguing back and forth, and blah, 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 and conjecture, and what it comes down to is this, is if you have the gold to spend on such things, then do so. If you don't, then you're just going to be playing a different aspect of a game that has different aspects to it. Um, you're not going to be able to get, first of all, the XP bonus. Now, with what I'm wearing, and I'm going to show that off here now that I'm done fighting, um, you get 45% extra XP. Now, that is the helm, the shoulders, uh, the cloak, uh, chest, uh, legs. Now, I did have on um, this guy here, but I didn't buy the token to upgrade it, so I got this on a drop and I put that on. Now, this also gets into gold, so, I'm going to cover the heirlooms first, because gold is very intricately locked in with this. Yes, it is worth putting them on, at low level. A lot of people are barking and complaining and bitching about the stats. Well, guess what? The stats don't really matter. I, in my experience, the stats matter a little bit early on. Because if you're wearing gray gear, which is the only stuff, or white gear, which is really the only stuff that's available to you, you have stats. And that helps immensely with damage. You can one-shot, bang, 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 run around, tag up a bunch of stuff, say you're a warlock or a hunter, and oh my god, oh my god, and blow it up. All right, cool story. Warrior is going to be able to stand in there. Paladin's going to be able to stand in there, bash stuff. Oh my god, it's dying. Oh, it's so, it's so freaking awesome. Cool story. At some point, it just doesn't matter anymore. 
because you're going to hit that point where you're where you should be, you're, you're playing the game, you're doing your thing, you're playing the game. Then, it kind of takes off again. And it, But yet again, I will tell you, the stats on heirloom armor really don't matter in the long run. What does matter is the fact that you have the XP boost on it. That matters. Now, this is where gold comes in. If you've been somebody that's been playing since vanilla, or even shorter than that, BC, Wrath, you understand, I mean, even new, some new players, understand how to make gold. Gold is not hard to make. I don't care what you say. Um, there was a real big boost from vanilla into BC where people that never really had gold were able to get it very easily. I remember um, running around 15, 20 minutes. I had 500 gold in in Burning Crusade when it first came out. I didn't know what to do. I felt like my pants were on fire and I had to spend it on something. It was, so it was a very new time that people got gold. Nowadays, I think it's even more than that, but people make the game hard. You're not going to make gold standing around in a, in a main city talking and, oh my god, I have to be the, the toughest guy on the internet. Cool, you're the toughest guy on the internet. All right, well, you're doing that, I'm going to go make some gold. So how would I go about doing it? Now, there's a lot of gold guides out there and a lot of people with bad information. I'm not going to go through all who's doing it and what they're doing. That's not my business. Their channels are their channels. This is mine. What I am going to say is, is that People that don't like questing are not going to hear what I have to say. They're just not. Because I think the questing is, next to old school farming, the absolute best way to make your gold. Now, again, what do I mean by that? Yes, you can go and you can do the transmog stuff. I think it's... Uh, I might be saying the wrong place, but I'm going to say it anyways. I think it's... Uh, uh, in, um, okay, maybe I'm not going to say it. There is a, um, a miner's helmet that transmog people absolutely have to have. And I think I've said this in a, in a, in a, in a past video. So I'm going to go through after I beat this guy down. I probably should have looked this up before I did the video, but I was pretty sure of myself earlier. Um, dungeons, classic, there you go, Oldman. Oldman has, you have to farm it, but there is a helmet in there, construction helmet, that's popular transmog. There's people that claim it goes for like 10 million gold. If you can get 10 million gold for an old helmet, cool. You don't need to worry about gold anymore. But it's a very low drop rate. There's also some weapons that drop in there for transmog. But I digress. You can go in there and get enchanting mats. The enchanting mats used to sell for a lot. They don't anymore. Sometimes you can find your niche. And with... with the expansion coming up, you just might have a burst of people looking for old enchanting mats. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, it's just an opinion. Questing is absolutely by far the A grade A number one way to do it. And how do I know that? Now, I don't have screenshots of this, but I paid for my flying, my 70 and 80 flying, running around in... Um, in Hygel and Lich King. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, and it really, maybe on the grand scheme of things, isn't, but when you can quest and get gold and drops to pay for that stuff, that's kind of impressive. Now, where does that equal into right now? As far as questing, you absolutely should unlock this place. Like, I don't know why people wouldn't unlock this place. Now, this goes kind of to my next point, is pick one zone when you go to another place. Do 10 levels. Do the, exp do the expansion in one zone. What do I mean by that? Uh, well, for Cataclysm, I went to Hygel. I only went to Hygel. i gotten 6 of 9. Uh, I deleted all the quests. But... I'll show you what I mean. I just got to get to it. There. I got se Okay, I got 7 to 9. I did 10 levels in roughly... 
I want to say four to five hours. And that was just straight playing. And as you can see, I still have stuff that I would need to go do there. But I did the levels. A very important thing to say there, that was not rest XP. The only rest XP that was done with was when I would log off for the night. Um, which means I started with some. Um, I started doing this late one night. And then the next morning I had some. So there was roughly a bar, I mean a three quarters to a bar of rest XP. I'm not sure exactly what the total count is. But I burned that up. Now, something else you can do is take herbalism. I have herbing and skinning on this guy. I'm going to make a fortune on all my new guys because I've been saving all the herbs, all the, the leather. Saving it all. That's very key. And I will say that when I came here, I was at, I was in 400s on both of those professions. I got the drops because you have, that's how you get to the next level, so to say, of the, of your professions. I shot right to 700, so I don't have to worry about it. I got the joy of cooking, the, the joy of skinning, the joy of herbalism, all that business, and boom, went right to 700. Now, why else should you do this? Okay, so I wrote down some stuff, and I will put this in the uh, description. I don't have any fancy um, graphics or anything like this. But, unlock the mine. Why should you unlock the mine? Rest XP, I was getting 3,781 well, 3, to 3,780 XP a hit on metal. I chewed up my rest XP quickly, and it leveled off to 1,890 XP a hit. You have about 10 hits in there. That was a cute chunk of change, just for clearing out metal in your garrison mine. Now I took the leather working guy. Why am I taking the leather working guy? Because of the trap. This needs some, uh, to the next gold making idea. I'm going to be baking the place, the, the tailor's hut, and here's why. Hex weave bags, 30 slot bags. They are still selling on my server for between two and 3,000 gold. Sometimes higher at, at peak points, all the way up to maybe 3,500. It takes 100 hex weave uh, cloth that is cycled from sumptuous fur. Now, that's going to lead to my next spot, but it takes 100 hex weave cloth and 3 sorceress earth. Now, um, where I'm going next is I'm going to show you my little secret place, and I'm sure other people have done this and whatever and whatever, but um, this is the place where I go to farm sumptuous fur. I can get four, about 400 in an hour, four to 600 in an hour. Um, the reason I'm putting such a broad band on that is two to three stacks is because your results may vary. Why would they vary? Well, the spawn rate is very quick. That's not the problem. What the problem is, is other people that may know about this spot. Now, I go in totally off hours. I will go during the week at like 2, 3 in the afternoon, sometimes late morning, but definitely late at night there's nobody here. I know that there's nobody here because I've been here multiple times late at night and had absolutely no problems. And generally, if there's nobody there, you can push people around. Um, those bags are going to sell. The only thing is it takes time inside the hut to process the sumptuous fur into the cloth. Now, what? how else can you get cloth without doing this? You can take your resources, and if you put the trading post in, trade them in, trade the resources in for sumptuous fur. Now, when Warlords was going out, they raised the price on, on the resource cost for buying stuff inside the garrison. So there is that. And that leads me kind of to my next point where I would tell you this is going to be very easy if you have multiple tunes doing this. Now what does that mean? I have 10 tunes with garrisons. I go check their stuff, pull their resources, buy some shoes first, send it to my tailor, and make a pile of cloth. I have probably enough for 50 bags on my main warlock, who is my tailor, to make bags at the beginning of the expansion. Now, I realize that they've already, obviously, released the races. So, it's not going to be hitting as hard as it would in some of the, in like, legions. But you're still going to have people that are going to start playing again that aren't going to feel like farming this, and they're just going to do what they want. Whatever. I'm here to try to help and just give you a couple of tips based on, on the stuff that I know, and go from there. Now, we're almost to this spot. Now, this is Vol'jin's Pride. You wind up getting sent here, 
Now, you saw how I flew here from my garrison. This is the spot. Once you fly here, just grab the flight point. You can boom. This is the spot. These little guys right here. Let me show you how I do. And then you do what you want. These guys drop a pile of this stuff. And it's definitely worth your while to come here and just farm it up a little bit. You don't have to spend all day, just an hour. Now, at lower levels, you're obviously not going to just one-shot these guys the way I can in my 110. Understandable. You may not want to, you know, you may not want to sit here and farm at a lower level, but I want to prove, I said it, I want to prove what I'm saying is true, and you do what you want. Boy, these guys, I for, honestly forgot how irritating these little bastards were. Because they really are irritating. I'm not going to lie about this. Okay, so he was evade bugging because I was back behind that thing. Okay, I didn't think that these guys were going to be such a pain in the butt going down. Clearly, I didn't think that this was going to be an issue, so... Yeah, that hit is... Friggin' irritating, dude. Now, obviously, I like Warlocks. Always played them, like them. You can see the value that they have as far as farming is concerned. Now, alright, I'm gonna wait till this guy's dead. I'm sure that mages, definitely hunters, I mean, everybody's going to have their little niche in how they, how they farm, how they can do it, everybody, you know, but at level 110, does it really matter? No. Okay. So I got eight. Now, that was a little bit harder work than it should have been, but on a 110, it's not going to be that hard. Two, four, six, eight. So roughly, uh, hold on, three, six, nine. So roughly one apiece. That's not bad. That's not a bad average. Higher level, again, I was getting a lot more. I was bashing the hell out of them. I controlled the area, and that was that. So I would tell you, in conclusion to this, build up your garrison. You just pick this zone to start. There's no point. You're going to make 100. I, I'm already 95. Now, what else have I been doing? Well, again, I'm going to put these stats down so that you can see them. Today I did, before I started recording, I did a few things. I went ahead, I signed up for some PvP. Now, ironically, I did uh, two Silver Shard Mines. One was a win, one was a loss. At the loss, I started... Where was it? Okay. I started out, I was in there for 12 minutes. I wound up getting 99,416 XP in 12 minutes. It was a loss. The win, I was in there for 10 minutes. I started out with... 9,601 XP and ended with 164,131 for a gain of 154,530 XP. Pretty good for 10 minutes worth of work. Even the 100k wasn't bad for 12 minutes worth of work. Now I also went to Slag Mines, which is an instance in Warlords Adrenor. This number... I was in there for 15 minutes. I started out at 56,254 XP, and I ended with 293,529 XP for a gain of 237,275 uh, 237, XP. 
56K to 237K is a pretty good game. But it really, again, is... Don't forget, you're getting um, a boost from doing the LFG. That was a, a 56,950 XP. That's added into that total. So, yes, you're you're already guaranteed XP for doing an LFG, but it's really, again, your choice. What do you want to do? Do you want to go to LFG, maybe get a bad group, or get a tank that's going to hopefully pull everything? And that's really where the variation, in my opinion, obviously is, is that you get a tank that wants to pull every living thing that's possibly able to be pulled, Versus the tank that just wants to skirt, run around, maybe pull something extra, not pull something extra, wipe the group a, a time or two. Or go to PvP and you, know, you already know that within the first couple of minutes, if it's a good group, bad group, that everybody's going to be running around playing grab ass or they're actually going to get the mission done. Depending on the PvP, it could be longer, it could be shorter, it just depends. Now... Again, gold is going to come into into things because going back to the heirloom gear, you're going to have to buy the upgrades for this stuff. Now, as you can see, it go my stuff goes to 110. Now, up to a certain point, and sometimes beyond, you can buy upgrades with either the pvp marks you can buy them with um the time walking because there is a time walking on the schedule for next uh starting on tuesday for next week um you can rack up a pile in there and you don't have to spend gold on on um, heirloom upgrades i spent 70k yesterday why because honestly i just don't care i had the gold didn't see the point upgraded uh some of the plate and the cloth that my Shadow Priest and Warlock are using to go to 110. Now, something else people don't do is enchant their stuff. I'm going to show these items. And I enchanted them. I enchanted them with Legion's Enchants. The enchants will go up as you level. It, you don't have to enchant them. They changed it a while ago. You don't have to enchant it with stuff that's actually of the level it's at. You can use current enchants and it'll just scale up as you go. Now, I got both of these rings and this necklace for 75 gold each. That's 75, 75, 75. That was a rarity. This is not going to happen on your server very often. It doesn't happen here very often. I'm not saying you're going to have the same results. I'm not saying that you will have the same results. I'm saying I got real lucky when I decided I wanted to upgrade my rings and found out that these were sitting in the auction house that are good for me up to a hundred and maybe a little beyond now i'm not going to obviously upgrade them to their you know the o of two o and two they're going to stay there i'm not going to upgrade them the point was was that somebody put something in the auction house that was uh economical for us at this level boom i bought them i'd be retarded not to the next ones were over a thousand a piece now, if you look, the rings actually do have stats that are very complementary to me, except on the necklace. I don't need versatility, but I want that mastery. So, you know what? Two out of three ain't real bad. What it comes down to is, is go out and quest. Play the game. Or take your army of tunes, make 1,000 to 1,700 gold, depending where which old raid slash instant you farm and take your chances. I personally think that going into raids and instances is kind of a bad plan and here is why. You go in there, I like to go into multitask. Getting gold is always the primary goal, but can you disenchant that for its mats and sell them in the auction house? The answer to that is no. You can't. You can't get the kind of gold selling enchanting mats. There's not enough to skin in there. The BOEs don't sell for enough anymore. 
So with that behind you, you're going in there for the raw gold. When you're out in the field, you get the gold, you get the quest reward, which could turn into gold or an enchanting mat. For example, in Warlords, I'm getting the stuff to power the base. You can't expect to make gold at every level, but you can do your damnedest to try. You, you, the money just is not there anymore running around in old instances. Plus world drops. You can get world drops. Now I'm not saying the world drops from Legion or from Legions are still going to sell for high amounts. The, the world drops from Draenor are definitely not going to sell. It's just going to be like another, like a raid instance drop. But you're empowering yourself more by going out and questing. You're getting the static gold from completing the quest. You're getting the XP if you're still leveling. But if you're, you know, max level, just go out and quest for an area that you haven't quested in. And I'm not talking about, like, old world, like, I don't know, uh, questing around the Thunder Bluff area or the Orgrim area. I'm saying go to, like, Draenor. Go to someplace in Legions that you didn't complete all the quests in. Go complete the zone to get the achievement, and you'll be surprised by how much gold you get. I'm just trying to help out. Not everybody is going to agree with what I have said here, and they're right. Everybody has their own system. Everybody has their own style. But this is what has always consistently worked for me. When I want to make money, this is what I do. Now, the final thing I'm going to cover is, in Legions, you have your companions. Now, if you didn't take care of your companions and, and max them out with the best um, possible equipment, say going to Broken Shore, going to the command center and getting the, the legendary that the guy would give out, and you got lucky and got the, the one that you could get gold and resources or gold and um, artifact power, You'd want to, those were ideally the ones that you would want, especially for, well, for the guy that was going to be coming out with you, the companion that was going to be coming out with you. Everybody else, you could get, like, um, increased chances depending on um, Storm. I, I forget some of the other random events that could be going on. Um, some of the abilities. Uh, you know, getting a token to buff up, like Death Knight's got one where you could buff up by 20% a random champion on a mission. So if you had a really crappy chance in 2020, all of a sudden, that 150 turned into a 200, a guaranteed second completion. But again, you have to have an army. You have to have, you know, five, ten tunes doing this. And Legion's was not exactly all friendly. So it was a pain in the butt to do. And yes, these things take time. So there's always going to be the people that are going to say, oh my god, I don't live in my mom's basement. <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell you then. While you're on and you're not raiding, go make a bunch of flasks. Flasks right now in Torellian are still selling. I'm making a fortune off of them. Selling them in my guy. Yes, is it a pain in the butt to go farm herbs? Yeah, but you know what? You're still getting static drops. You're still getting stuff that, that could sell in the auction house. You're still getting herbs. I mean, if you don't want to make the, the drinks, sell the herbs. I don't know what to tell you. I'm just telling you what worked for me. So to kind of wrap this up, because I know it's probably been a long video, uh, and there's a lot of information here, and I tried to organize it in my head the best that I could without a script. Just play the game. There isn't anything, there isn't any great secret. These people that make these, you know, gold making. Yeah, there are people that have time to sit there, put 10,000 transmog items up and sell five in a month. But who knows? That could be a 30,000, one item could be 30,000 gold. People can buy and sell in the auction house, see something that's, you know, lower priced. Somebody didn't put a zero in where they should have, and now you're getting a deal on it. I've done it late at night or rushing to get stuff up, and I screwed up, and suddenly, oh shit, somebody got a deal off of me. Well, Merry Christmas. Congratulations. I've done it to other people multiple times. I did it to myself. Enjoy your, pro your, your prospering off of my screw up. So to kind of wrap this up, look. Go ahead, do just pick a zone when you start questing, and just finish out the quests in that zone. 
that's going to save you from having to go back to a zone that you didn't finish and figure out where you were. Guess what? You didn't start the zone. Start, start at the beginning now. Build this up. I, I can't stress that enough. And I realize that this is late game advice or mid game advice. Build this up. I'm 95. I've been PVPing. I've been doing instances. I've been going out questing. I'm not that far in. Two of six. By the time I'm done, I might be five of six. I don't know. It just depends how much you you would want to PvP or do instances. So, again, whoever watches this video, I've thrown a lot of stuff out there. I've tried, like I said, I've tried to organize the best I could. Sorry if it, it's kind of scatterbrained, but it's what I do and how I make my gold. Um, so yeah. Um, Thanks for watching, guys. I hope some of it's helped you. Some of it's simplified. It's been a lot of data that I've gotten off of websites and uh, message boards that I've read, and I've processed it and done what's worked for me. So hopefully it helps somebody out there. I've tried to put it in the plainest terms and not a total ramble fest, but at the same time, um, simplified for you. And if you need to go back and listen to something, there you go. So thanks for watching, guys.